Hello and welcome to Pat, where we give you the fish. That's Jeremy, I'm Devin, and we're here to do chart pattern analysis or price action trade analysis on Kramer's list. So, without further ado, let's rock and roll to that. All Morning. Right. <laughs> so... Jeremy, let's see here. First on the list, they got the Dow, S&P, and NASDAQ. Uh, those are set for a mixed open today. Uh, they're in a holding pattern as investors brace for an incoming wave of big tech earnings. And that's apparently the Fed's favorite inflation reading. Uh, there's going to be a bunch of reports in the week ahead. But do you want to take a quick look over at... Would you like to take a... Oh. I guess uh, the first thing on the list there is um, Coke. And okay. you know, I got a, a beat on first quarter earnings and revenue. To, uh, well, yeah, it's Coke. I mean, even in the best of times or the worst of times, I mean, people drink Coke. It's just it's a staple here in America anyway. And there's then there's all the, the varieties of Coke you can have like rum and Coke you can have uh, you know whiskey and Coke you can have <laughs> yeah yeah exactly I mean you know there's there's just different it's a good mixer and it's a good I mean shoot uh, one of the guys at uh, one of the places I worked I mean every day that's what he'd bring with him as a Coke mm -hmm. but it's still got that exhaustion look like everybody else <laughs> kind of does yeah looking at the chart here I mean this is a weekly. Um, we popped up. This is like the uh, the topping pattern you don't want to see. Mm -hmm. um, you got a high peak here and a high peak here, and a couple of attempts at a breakout in here. Then you've got this long pullback here. Um, kind of interesting. I'm going to set up a couple things on this chart that stand out to me. One is a, a key support area, right around 58.50. Can it maintain this rally? Well, there were some uh, sellers in here, so it kind of took some profit. Let's have a look at the daily. Yeah, that's a whole bunch of profit taking. However, if you build this up to a bullish measured move, it's still got a little left in it, but it's going to have a critical resistance point now. And you look to my left here, see how the crosshair lines up with that previous high right at the top of that wick. So if you look back here, we still got a little ways to go before we break out. Well, it's got to break that previous high. So it's got to get above about, about 65 bucks to really go anywhere. Um, I would be surprised if it doesn't at least consolidate in this area before moving on. But as far as um, traders go, this one's kind of hands off to wait and see until we either get a breakout or a pullback. So it's got to pick a direction first. And it'll be about in this area. Um, get down to the two-hour chart real quick here. And you can see there's been a lot of um, very quick profit-taking taking place here. And we've got kind of a, a mixed open here. So if it doesn't hold this uh, support line at about um, 6390 to $64, I'd be cautious of going long on that. That's all. I would just... Uh, Wait and see. This is not a uh, not a jump on board and take it to the moon type of move here. How long would you wait? Uh, as long as it takes. I mean, if it starts breaking down into reversing this trend, um, you can expect almost a one for one first down to like sixty two fifty, and you know if things get bad in the market, run down to like uh, fifty nine sixty bucks. So mm -hmm. I would take caution. I would wait for this. It. It can, by all intents and purposes, range here and then break out. But uh, until it does any decision, I will stay off of that one. Yeah, heard. So, hands off. We're hands off on that one. All right, Coca-Cola, hands off. For at least a week or so. At least. Let it consolidate. All right. Now, let's see. Back to the... Okay, that was number two was Coca-Cola. Number three is Welfar Wells Fargo says to buy Disney, D-I-S, raising its price target on the stock by six bucks a share to 147. 
Um, let's see here. I'll grab that in a second, but it uh, looks like uh, Procter & Gamble was in that previous list, too. And this is just... Oh, yeah, 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 that's right. Uh, Procter & Gamble, yeah, last week's results were fueled in part by price hikes, volume growth 3% at the company's sparkling drinks unit, organic revenue growth up 12 points, or 12%. Points out how strong India might be. Hmm. Well, we we lined this up last week with a uh, measured move here. We found the consolidation points. It did consolidate and eventually break out. Now we're kind of in a nice parabolic trend. I mean, that's a heck of a gap up right there. Did well in earnings. Um, that was a nice dividend payment too. So. We had a whole bunch of dope on the chart for this one. I don't know where this came from. <laughs> I think that was a day trading setup here. I'll get rid of it. But look at that dope. Wait, wait, wait. But <laughs> look at it's how in the wrong spot. And sometimes my uh, my trading app will do this. This was oh. probably supposed to be back here. Oh. Just running angulars on the breakout, but if you look, I mean, they, they kind of line up with they where do. it ended up with that mm -hmm. parabolic move. Yep. But I like to peel them off my chart and keep it clean, because it made one target and then pushed on for a full measured move above. And uh, that could very well continue to run. Watch for a little consolidation here in the next couple of days, maybe finish out this week with a big old bull flag. If it breaks out, it's got a pretty good shot at like 160.40. Um, if it breaks down, watch for a retest of about 153. I guess I can move on to Disney from here. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, so let me go. I'll let me go ahead and read through Disney real quick here. So Wells Fargo says to buy Disney at DIS, raising its price target on the stock by $6 a share. Uh, analysts say club holding Disney is massively under earning in direct to cons in direct to consumer and represents the best opportunity in media. We agree, however, we think this quarter its physical its fiscal Q2 will not be strong. It's a Q3 story. Disney is beginning its second wave of previously announced layoffs. Hmm. I remember saying something about support being about a hundred bucks on that one. And we had this bullish measured move on the daily chart, traded that off, uh, did some more day trading here, as you can see. Um, I believe we made a 50% retracement and then some, we went down to the bottom third. So now we're consolidating. Um, I'll believe it if it breaks a hundred bucks. You know, we could go back to 108, 116, respectively. Are you on the daily there? Yeah, this is a daily here. Can we get a look at the weekly? The weekly, I didn't like at all. Oh. <laughs> that looks like a big old bear flag, but I mean, can how back... low can Disney go? Personally, I don't mind the look <clears throat> of that. That looks almost like it's double bottoming. Uh, I mean, you got the you inverse don't... head and shoulders look here. Mm -hmm. You got a one, a two, a three. Mm-hmm. And we're back, you know, in a, into a, a swing above the neckline, but I don't trust these until they work out. So unless we can see a rally and get back into this control area and get above 100 bucks, start playing with the, you know, 108, 110, I'm not too confident in that uh, breaking out anytime soon. Not until it consolidates and, and pushes on. We could get a quick, you know, one for one setup here where you got this measured move here, consolidate run to about 108.80. That's in the book. It can happen, um, but until it starts to, to trend on that, I'd be a little cautious on this on a daily. Um, usually when you when you get this set up and you get a very steep sell-off after an earnings like this, I mean, this was uh, pretty cut and dry here. Um, you get into bear mode when you break that critical support line, and it almost did. Right down in here. Mm -hmm. So if if it can't stay above the neckline of the previous measured move and consolidate for a breakout here for a one for one, this can easily break down. So 
definitely take caution on this one. You know, don't go um, chasing whatever the analysts say. Yeah, wait a. Well, would you basically wait until like next week sometime? Looking like, I mean, you want to make sure that this isn't going to break over, and this is the key support area. Um, you know, right around ninety-eight bucks. Just kind of be very cautious of that. We're at ninety-nine forty today before open. I'd be a very, very critical of this one. I wouldn't just jump in and sit, do what the analysts say. Just yeah. my opinion. Wait for it. And it's, we're going to find a lot of these um, wait and see situations uh, going into May. It's kind of been the, the old tradition was, you know, uh, sell in May and go away. It hasn't been the case for probably the past, uh, what, eight years? <laughs> People kept saying that every year, and I'm just like, no, man, May's been doing great. But uh, this May, we might have, with the confluence of a lot of different setups here that are looking the same, we might have a little bit of a, a, a pullback into the first couple weeks of May. And to boot here, we have a, uh, a diamond pattern here, too, and it's at the top of the trend. So this is kind of uh, one of those things where you would rather wait and see what the outcome is before you just jump in long. You, know, you want to make sure you're not getting beat down here. Mm -hmm. So this is uh, ominous of a topping pattern and a pullback. They don't always. So just watch, you know, next few days we got to probably <clears throat> beginning of next week to figure out which direction we're going to go. And... Whenever you get a diamond, you get kind of two channels out of it. You get a descending channel and a rising channel. And I'll adjust this a little bit. I'll refine this a little bit better later on. But when you get these, you kind of want to pay attention to what the early outcome is as well. Um, oftentimes, you'll get one that kind of breaks out to the upside, and then it starts playing in between angular resistance and angular support on divergence, the output side of the diamond, I like to call it. And sometimes you'll get a failed breakout to one side or the other and then rip it, rip it down the other way or rip it up the other way. So watch as it comes through next week. We'll come back to this and, and take a view. But if it can hold this support without breaching into this channel, okay, we can we can expect, you know, possibly a rally. But if it breaks that, then we're likely to come down into this channel and just start trending down. You'll you'll get the typical support break, uh, your regression line break, and then you'll hit the bottom of the channel. And if you kind of line up what this previous price action did, it lines up with all of that going into next week for a start in the next few weeks if this continues to break over. Okay. But definitely be mindful of that. I wouldn't just uh, you know, go and take someone's word for it and go along here. I would wait. Take a look at the chart first. That's it. The chart tells all. It never lies. The chart tells all. all right, it's not, it, not really going to be biased until you see what the setup looks like. Let's and I'm seeing AMD. AMD. Huh. All right. Read on. I'll get the ticker up. Yep, go ahead. And Susquehanna raises the price target on AMD Advanced Micro Devices to 115 from 112 a share. More importantly, the analyst says this could be the last difficult quarter. Inventory overhauling is finally, al finally almost over. <laughs> Samsung uh, pre-announcement says it faces weakest quarters since 2009 as the memory chip market is in the worst slump in decades. It has been. So AMD peaked up here at about uh, almost 165. It's a pretty nice ride. Um, I certainly traded the upside of that. That was a beautiful bullish measured move. That was a while ago. And now we've been in this descending trend ever since and I've taken a few shots at shorten it you know going down into this level and then I traded long on the angular breach of this descending channel and I took it long with the target of 100 bucks it nailed it did a nice clean trade on that uh, you can look back and in, in the uh, the chat session I'm sure I've talked about this quite a bit with the group um, 
coming after that, I was like, you know, it met my target. I took my hands off of it and let it come back and settle. And now we're at a support zone on top of a control zone. So, yes, it can boot out here and, and attempt that another shot at 100 bucks. But until until we get a, a direction on the breakout, I'm going to be a little skeptical and, and watch it very closely in this range. You can see I've, I've had all this dope out here for a while. Mm -hmm. um, this was a liquidity zone where I traded the breakout right here. And I'm actually going to adjust that right before your very eyes because the daily chart has a lot of information that is often overlooked. When you see a wick like this, usually these are uh, occurring where a lot of limit orders take place. So when institutions set up you know, a limit of where they want to buy or where they want to sell, there's a point of interest that's generated. So we have what I like to call a liquidity box. And right now we've kind of breached the bottom half of that box and we're likely to consolidate in that range. So I mean, let's see a range between like $85 and $88 accumulate somewhere in there without breaching the $85 support area. So I'm going to move this support area to the base of that range. And if it can consolidate here, I'm I'm all for another break, another attempt at a $100 breakout. Um, if it fails this, well, we've got a couple of other uh, trends we can find in here. And one would be this guy right here running down. There's an angular here. So um definitely pay attention to this for the next couple of weeks see where it goes but i would i would wait for a confirmation of trend before i go and and chase this thing um, up to their price targets i noticed that with with a lot of these when they say you know we're raising the price target on something they're they're not talking in the next few weeks they're talking months maybe a quarter or two down the road so yeah i can i can definitely agree with those targets being out there and eventually price making its way around there but for a lot of retail investors uh, they tend to have a lack of patience so you know they'll go jump in when the analysts say hey we're going to raise the price target on that uh, the institutes will short it or sell into that strength and try to buy it at a, a what is considered a fair value well all you got to do to look and find that fair value is look left you know figure out where it's been what it's done before uh, where the uh, the big orders are taking place and liquidity is uh, you know making a lot of shares change hands. Once you locate those areas, you can pretty much pick off where fair, where the fair value is. And this is about it in this consolidation area is current fair value. Uh, pending the company continu continues to do well, you know it'll bounce off that fair value and, and trend on out. But if it fails that fair value, well, um, a lot of the uh, Institutions will do one of two things. They will either shore it up with uh, what's known as an options collar strategy, where they have a, a fail safe, so to speak, um, where they'll have a, a long put further down the road expiration. And they'll use that to, to kind of hedge the position as well as selling covered calls against it. So that tends to cause a lot more liquidity to take shape, or you'll see these, uh, you know, um, You'll see these headlines pop up with unusual options activity. Well, <laughs> it's not unusual. It's just a big size. So you, you can, it kind of shows up on the radar for a lot of people. And when they see those, that's kind of another trap. A lot of people will go and, oh, wow, there's a, you know, $5 million worth of options that are traded with this expiration date at this strike. I'm going to go buy one. <laughs> you know? hmm. Don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> Every time you see a big options order like that, you got to remember there's, there's a very key factor to consider. There's always a buyer and there's always a seller mm -hmm. on every transaction. And I sell a lot of options. And when I see something like that and the implied volatility jumps up, I would probably be more inclined to sell that option than to buy that option, just kind of the way I operate. Got to kind of think like the hedge funds. But anyway... Yeah, just kind of pay attention to this consolidation zone. I think that can be um, a formidable area to either purchase it or sit on your hands and wait. <clears throat> but yeah, there's like definitely this week uh, we should be seeing. That's on the daily. Yeah, so this week we should know which way that's going. I think so. Next couple days, and next few days. This is, uh, you know, th this week and next week are kind of crucial to uh, stepping out of April and into May. So that's kind of 
where you're going to see a lot of these trends change or consolidate. Mm -hmm. And it's uh, it's earnings time, you know. It's yeah, kind of what's it's, going uh, on. It's a lot of Q1 info coming out, so you know, and and we were kind of um, kind of hawkish going into this. We were just kind of waiting. We're birds of prey. We just circle the area and wait for uh, something tasty to pop up. <laughs> that's that's a good analogy. I like it. All right, uh, back to Johnson and Johnson, J and J. Yeah, we've been doping that for a while. Let's see here, uh, they're getting ready to kick off uh, their uh, their initial uh, public offering roadshow for its soon to be spun off consumer unit Kenview, looking to raise 3.5 billion at a 40 do uh, 40 billion dollar valuation. For the new firm to house such brands as Avino, Band-Aid, Listerine, Tylenol, Neutrogena. When the J&J &J split happens later this year, the pharma and medtech businesses will remain and keep the Johnson & Johnson name. Okay. Um, looking at the chart dope, we were looking to uh, this target here, this 50% retracement target, pretty simple. And this was, um, I remember talk, talking about this last week. It was, uh, this is a potential, not last week, week before. This is a potential area to buy high, sell higher, but watch for consolidation. It must consolidate and continue with the bullish one-for-one -one trend setup. Um, it did not confirm that. So it instead rejected this liquidity zone here. This wick here provided a lot of limit orders, and it was like a wall. Um, every time people would buy it and try to push that level, it got sold and shorted down. Well, now we've come back through a key support area. You know, it's kind of a middle ground here. A little liquidity off of this little spinner here. And check it out. We've actually developed even a third liquidity zone. And this is where we kind of subdivide the chart with these zones. And if this, then that occurs. So then you can program yourself. You know the so one thing. We, the one thing I am happy to see is that it covered that gap and bounced off of it. Yes, exactly it that. And that's a lot of things that happen when when you see that you you get just that liquidity. You know, you get a whole bunch of buyers in here. You see that wick? That was a failed bearish breakout. A bunch of buyers soaked that up. Now we're back in the middle. But we don't like to diddle in the middle. We like to trade the break. So we'll wait and see what comes out of this ac ac accumulation here, and it can trend either way. This was the previous 50% retracement target, and then this is the zone to break out. So if this, if this breaks out bullish, cool, it'll go that way. Uh, for now, it's consolidating. So we'll wait and see. Again, it's another wait and see. You know, what, I'm, what I'm seeing is maybe another pullback and then and then a measured move to cover that 50% retracement or, right. just, or just straight cover the 50% retracement. Cause exactly. Because you got one, two. It's only wave yep. two, basically, so... So we can we can either see this come down and test this support area down here. It might even hit the very bottom of it, which would be about a measured move from about the break fair value up here mm -hmm. down to here. And then just kind of eyeballing, it's about the same move distance from accumulation. So yeah, that's got that chance of pulling back even further to about a buck sixty or so. And then resuming a trend or breaking over. And if it breaks over, well, we know where it's been before. We could see it come all the way down to 150, you know, 152, somewhere in that area. Very possible. So watch these zones. Very critical of what will happen next. So, again, it's just one of those. <laughs> it's going to be a wait and see kind of uh, couple, couple, three weeks here coming up. So we'll have to see what comes out of this. Um, I know we only have a couple more uh, tickers to really look at on, on this um, particular list. Uh, once we get past... Number seven, we're pretty much on just going and, and reiterating a few things. Um, I'm not even going to look at Bed mm -hmm. Bath and Beyond. They filed for bankruptcy. They're done. They left everybody in the wind. Bed uh, Bath and Beyond freaking filed for bankruptcy. Yep, over the weekend on a Sunday they filed. <laughs> wow, kind of cool. Wish I could file things on a Sunday, but whatever. Wow. Um, kind of looking into that. I mean, Bed Bath and Beyond was just a uh, man. Let's I... see here. Let me let me read that real quick. So, uh, 
Bed Bath & Beyond files for bankruptcy, asking the court for permission to auction assets. The stores left will stay open for now. Before the filing, we looked at how troubles at Bed Bath are creating an opportunity for off-price retailer TJX. A few weeks back, uh, some of our members were getting excited about you know chasing this uh, this guy up here. And I told them, like, hey, look left. I started putting these lines on the chart. Look left. Let's see where it can go. Okay, it was breaking out. We know if it goes here, it can go there. Um, kind of nailed about the 650 range and started to get sold. There was a lot of volatility and liquidity in this little wick here. And at that point, I'm like, they're like, can it go higher? I'm like, sure it can. But um, I'm actually, honestly, thinking of shorting it here. And... Mm -hmm. Once it reached, you know, a critical area, I just looked back at the control areas, didn't fully break out. It completed about 50% of this trend here with the top of that wick. That was doomsday right there. 703. Yeah, if and, I saw that, if I saw that big green bar, I would have been like, that's an exhaustion bar. Uh-huh. <laughs> so I went uh, short here. Um, I went with... Uh, Basically, I just uh, went with a whole bunch of put options. They were expensive, but I went and turned them into uh, spreads once they hit the bottom and covered them. And then just uh, rode the rest down. Well, it did very, very well with that. And gosh, I mean, I, I went and took this whole cliff ride down. I closed my position when it hit 50 cents. I was done at that point. And writing this consolidation down here i took some profit in this consolidation here because it was just kind of going sideways pretty easy trade right um looking at the company structure wasn't looking good things were just kind of uh not adding up to something being um, even remotely with a chance of pulling out of this without filing some sort of restructuring or, or bankruptcy mm -hmm. um for a hot minute, you know, in that in that big pop up, it became kind of a meme stock. I know Reddit was uh, really pushing this and talking about it. And dude, I just every time I'd see a whole pile of small orders buying this, uh, you'd see a few big big orders come through just shorting it. And like, yeah, there's no way there anybody in their right mind or anybody on the institutional side was going to see this through for a bull move. They were just shorting yep. the living tar out of it and. They were smart to do so. That was a definite smart money move. <laughs> they sold it. So here we are with bankruptcy. I'm um, just as a matter of time of uh, going sideways and, and liquidating and eventually delisting. It's just how it goes, unfortunately. Um, mm -hmm. I noticed on the other end of this uh, was Amazon. UBS lowers the price target on Amazon. I was reading up there ahead of you. Oh, want to catch why, why, why are you getting ahead of me, man? <laughs> UBS lowers Tell price target. <laughs> UBS lowers price target on Amazon AMZN from 127 to 125. Amazon is out with earnings after the bell Thursday. Are the analysts setting up for a shortfall? I'm waiting in the wings here, going hmm. <clears throat> <laughs> you know when I yeah. get that feeling. Uh -huh. This is that descending trend line, and dude, we've we've made attempt number four here on the weekly, right? Um, but we've come through after a break of this guy here with a full bullish one for one right up to earnings. We're right in a critical earnings spot, and we're looking right at liquidity, right in the zone here on the daily. So yes. Thursday, this thing is going to give us a direction and either A, it's going to rip a face off and surprise the hell out of everybody who lowered the price target on it, right on up to a buck thirty, or it can break over and test uh, 96, 93, whatever. It can get down there. But they, they lowered their price target to 125 from 127. Do you see it? <laughs> There is a zone in here, you know, 125 is right here. You can mm -hmm. kind of see there was a big gap right up to 130, uh, what was it, 133, 134. So kind of floating the price target in here is okay, but lowering it from 127 is kind of insignificant. If it breaches this, I know it's pretty, 
pretty common to see that price run right up to that 50% retracement level. Mm -hmm. And there's two of them because there's two separate channels within the channel here. We got this channel and this channel. You know, you got angular here and here. This would be the regression line. Or you've got the upper half of that channel where this would be the regression line. So take your pick. There's two different targets here. And the extension would be up to like 144 and a quarter. Um, you know, the first 50% retracement would be about 131. So in all seriousness, uh, wait and see. Uh, Thursday's going to have us on earnings. And um, I'm a little bit bullish on this compared. Mm -hmm, me too. I'm just going to wait and see. Wait for the break. Uh, that's it. Wait for the break and trade it. So if we how start much, to see. How big is the really move on good... that? How big is the move on that if uh, if it breaks uh, that resistance and, and continues up for a full, what, 50% retracement of that last move? The first leg, if you're looking at measured move stuff here on the two hour, you know, we've achieved a three leg here. Accumulate back to here. We've come back to key support. I'd almost expect it to test 105 going into earnings here. And if we get continuation, this all becomes one leg. So the extension would be 107 would be target one, 110 would be target two. And if this entire length ends up up here, you got a breakout target of 114. So wow. let me draw the box. I just We just need to wait for that to finish consolidating basically, huh? Pretty much. So effectively, yeah, wait for it to consolidate, wait and see, trade the break type of situation. Lots of other equities in the same boat, but Amazon, I'm a little bit more on the bull side than, than the bear side. Um, just because the price target was lower doesn't mean we short it here. <clears throat> we just wait and see what the earnings bring us. And heck, last time the earnings came out, it was pretty uh, <clears throat> exciting. <clears throat> Pardon me. Yeah, no, I, I mean, that's, recall. that's looking pretty good. I like the look of it. Oh, of course, uh, I want to wait for it to break that resistance, but other than that. The day of this earnings run, um, I went and sold a uh, 120, I think it was a 120 strike covered call. I sold it for like $195, bought it back the next day for $8. $8. Oh, wow. That's pretty awesome. <laughs> so Talk about a move. Yeah, I mean, the breakout target would have put it like right at about 120 on angular resistance here. So if I would have got a sign on that covered call, I'd have been happy either way. Mm -hmm. But I didn't. And I bought it back for pennies the next day. I could have just let it expire. But you know what? At that point, it was it was per, uh, prudent just to buy it back and move yeah, on. Just buy it back and get on. But it was a pretty nice swing. I mean, that was an overnight swing for incredible returns. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, great job. All right, let's uh, let's move. What do we even have anything on number seven here? Oh, I think we yeah. pretty much know it at, at Amazon. L we could LV go look at luxury goods giant LVMH. Uh, that's going to be MC dash FR. Uh, hits an all-time high and crosses the 500 billion market value. First European company to top that threshold. I don't know if it's going to come up that way. Yeah, it's going to be on a different market, so we don't have that here. Uh, LVMH, maybe? Maybe. What's the name of the company? Uh, that's that's the name of the company. Luxury Goods Giant, LVMH. Oh, okay. Yeah, Louis Vuitton. I'm not very familiar with it. Oh, it's Louis Vuitton? Maybe. Oh. LV. That's a ticky tack chart, though, isn't it? Oh yeah, we do not day trade that. That is no. not. That's not so. And I don't like the look of it anyway. Did I get the wrong ticker in there? Let me see. Yeah, LVMH. Either way. Huh? No, I guess it's the right one. So looking at the uh, weekly here, I mean, we've got pretty parabolic move it's almost done with this one for one we could see it cross the 200 up to the 210 level but 
That is uh, just a tacky looking daily mm -hmm. chart. You've already got and that's a on full, the and that's on the daily. Wow. You've already got a full third leg measured move done here. So if it can't break two hundred bucks, I mean I could see it pulling back, but uh, extension chart would be like two hundred eight, two ten. Wow, I mean that thing is trading high for being so ticky tack. It is. This is a uh, one of those investor stocks, and yeah, it pays a pretty decent dividend. Mm, I'd wait for it to come back. I'd love to see it consolidate under that two hundred dollar bill and, mm -hmm. and continue on, but if it if it breaks over here, it's got a retrace target of like one seventy five. So yeah, and that's pretty um, much what I'd be waiting for. I'd wait for it to retrace and then come back. Yeah, ideally, if you're going to invest in this, I mean. Louis Vuitton, I mean, <laughs> yeah, it'll do some two. stuff. Basically, got like two. Now nah, you got like two, three waves, two, three touches on resistance. Needs to pull back first, I think. Yeah, I'd say so. Um, do we have anything else on here? Tax day was disappointing. Sooner than There's... expected default deadline puts more pressure on Capitol Hill and the White House to figure out debt ceiling hike deal. Back in January, Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen said the government can pay its bills only through early June without an increase. It's uh, number eight. Number nine, Credit Suisse had a gigantic uh, outflows right before its collapse. 68.6 uh, .6 billion out the door during the first quarter, which necessitated an emergency rescue by domestic... But, uh, by domestic rival UBS. So they got bailed out. Number, wow, man. Number 10 at the base of the uh, Bed Bath & Beyond situation, there's TJX. Oh, yeah, TJX. Not looking too exciting yet. Volatile. Yeah, good volatility. Good, I like that. Good day trader, but um, nothing too serious on this thing. I'm just kind of... Some hard to predict stuff. You could day trade it. I mean, down to like the 5 and... One minute you could try and trade this this range break and stuff like that. But it's a nice consolidation channel right there, man. Yeah. I I really like that for uh for today actually. Might might make a move. Eh, you got a fifty percent retracement already. It's met that. You got your cup and handle here. That oh succeeded. yeah. There you go. <clears throat> you got your fifty percent retracement. And then actually you got consolidation. another you got another cup and handle setup right there. Right. Yeah. I like a that. Pretty good shot at heading for eighty-five bucks. That looks good for this yeah. week. You might want to keep an eye on that this week. Definitely, I'll throw that in the watch list. Yeah, you should. And it's put got good volatility. The, I mean, put that on the Kramer list. <laughs> heck yeah, put that on the Kramer list. All right, folks. Well, well, that's our show for today. Um, you know, sorry they didn't give us enough uh, to go all ten, but you know, we're uh, we're here for you. And uh, that was some good. That was actually some really good info, Jay. There was some good stuff yeah, in there some, today. There were a couple hands off. Stuff to watch, mm -hmm. you know. And there's, there's, um, there's a lot of hands off uh, going into May, and mm -hmm. it's just kind of typical. Um, between this week and next week, it's it's going to be a wait and see. You know, wait and see what the uh, the breakout's going to be. And we always say, don't trade the setup, trade, trade the break. Trade the break. And it just, um, this is definitely for, for an investor's market, this is definitely one of those times where you, you wait and you trade the break. Um, we might actually get one that finally follows the old uh, uh, adage of, you know, sell in May and go away. I don't think so altogether, but, you know, it's it's still going to be um, pertinent for pullbacks and stuff like that. So you'll find some opportunities. Um, whenever you see something where, uh, you know, the news is not looking so great, I see opportunity. As long as it's not, uh, you know, on the verge of bankruptcy like Bed Bath & Beyond was, which is unfortunate. It actually used to be a great store. I used to go and buy stuff there all the time yeah. back in the day. Uh, but uh, with the advent of Amazon and online shopping uh, just being, you know, completely dominating to that. Uh, mm -hmm. Hell, even the, the fact of the matter is uh, Walmart is actually the biggest online retailer currently still. Amazon competes, but they're not... Uh, not in direct competition with Walmart. Walmart's a giant, giant juggernaut. And uh, Amazon's like, uh, well, <laughs> not. So <laughs> cons considering the comparison between Amazon and, and uh, you know, the uh, Walmart company, it's kind of, uh, 
yeah, Amazon's got a lot of market share, but um, you know, competition is pretty dense in that field. And if if you weren't um, on board with getting into the uh, the online swing of things when brick and mortar was still hanging on there. If you didn't change with the leaves, you got left by the wayside. And well, there's mm-hmm. a, there's a lot of empty space in a lot of the malls across America. And it's just you know, take a walk around. You look around, see which companies are pulling out. Those are the companies you you're looking to short. Yeah, and Bed uh, Bath remember... Beyond was not one I was expecting to to go bankrupt. No. I was not expecting that because you, you know, know. And same with Sears. I mean, Sears yeah. went bankrupt, you know, and yeah, uh, Sears did I, I too. particularly took part in shorting that one down. So, I mean, you know, it's one of the first giants to go. Yep. Yep. It's just kind of sad, but. It is what it I'm is. TJX into the uh, watch yep. list, and there was a couple others to add. And what was that uh, other from one that, that. What was the other one that was consolidating? Who was it? Uh, uh, Johnson and Johnson. Andy. Oh, it was AMD. Johnson Johnson. Yep, Johnson yep. Johnson's already in there. Uh, AMD will go in there next too. I already okay. have AMD on all of my watch lists, but Disney, that one as well. Disney and Coke are hands off for now. Yeah, all right. So. Well, that's our show for today, folks. Uh, this is Pat. Remember, look left and wait for the break. That's right. Yeah, don't trade the setup. Trade the break. <laughs> don't trade the setup. Trade the break and look left. Remember. Those are the keys to price action trading. Anyhow, this is Pat, where we give you the fish. Have a great day.